Jennifer Cunningham. Thank you very much, Acting Speaker. And, um, I'm pleased to be able to join colleagues from across both sides of the House today to support uh, the bill before us, the Narcotic Drugs Amendment Bill 2016. Um, I want to just firstly outline uh, what makes me such a passionate um, follower of this issue of the devel development of medicinal cannabis uh, uh, availability to Australians. And like the member for Petrie, it's a direct personal experience with local, a local constituent. And, uh, I think that's a common experience many of us have had over recent times. And, and then just touch on, um, for the interest of those who might look at the speech afterwards, just some of the details of the bill so people are conscious of what it does. Uh, acting Speaker, on the 18th of May last year, I had a young man and his dad come to visit me. Uh, the young man's name's Ben Oakley and his dad's Michael. Uh, they came to talk to me at that point in time because uh, Ben it suffers a very rare condition, and some other speakers here have, have mentioned him as well because he was in Parliament with his mum and dad uh, on the day that this bill was introduced uh, because they've been following the issue so closely and he did some media and so some other parliamentarians had the opportunity to get to meet him. I had a short opportunity in the uh, Federation Chamber to put on record my great admiration for his bravery and also the great clarity with which he explains his experiences and why he is um, campaigning on the medicinal cannabis issue. But in May last year, um, Ben and his dad came to see me because they were organising a fundraising walk uh, to help with some of his costs. And uh, at the time, he wasn't using medicinal cannabis, and so that wasn't an issue that was on the radar. It was really just to make me aware of his uh, condition and what he was living with and uh, to see if I could assist with their fundraising efforts, which I was pleased to do. I want to just use um, Ben's and his dad's own words in describing their experience because I think they speak more powerfully than anything I could say. And if people want to follow Ben's story, he has a Facebook site called Roll On Ben Oakley, and um, it's a very powerful uh, way to get uh, his story out there. And uh, it's, I think, very encouraging how positive he and his family have remained. So Ben's dad on the um, <coughs> Roll On Ben Oakley Facebook describes what actually happened to Ben. <clears throat> and these are his words. On the 21st of November 2012, my son, Ben Oakley, collapsed after a cycling training ride. At the time, we all thought that he had pulled a muscle, but this was not the case. Many months of pain and discomfort were to follow without explanation as to what had happened to my fit and active boy. Ben has stiff person syndrome, a one in a million neurological disorder. In Ben's case, it affects his mid-spine and has left him in constant pain. It appears that Ben is the youngest person in Australia at this time with this horrible process. Ben has gone from a cyclist and triathlete to a wheelchair for anything more than a very short distance. Please watch the video attached to this post. <clears throat> it is Ben's story in his words. It's very hard to watch. It's harder to live with. Ben has acute full-body muscle spasm. Even amongst SPS sufferers, this is rare. The spasm appears similar to an epileptic seizure, but Ben remains fully alert, aware, and in the most intense pain. Ben has described what happens as, imagine taking a taser <clears throat> and holding it against your spine. A few weeks back, Ben had the worst day anyone could possibly imagine. Over the space of nine hours, Ben had 61 of these spasms. The longest continuous spasm lasted for two hours. Each spasm is accompanied by not only intense pain, but also huge increases in Ben's blood pressure, recorded at 208 over 190, more than enough to cause a stroke or a heart attack. His body temperature goes very high, recorded at 41.5. A spasm can be caused by a sudden scare, a cough, a sneeze, being upset or emotional or sudden intense pain. Any movement can and does cause Ben pain, and this obviously could cause him to have more spasms. Ben has gone from an active person who would rarely sit to not being able to make a move without a life-threatening spasm. 
The only positive thing I can say that has come from this is that fact of Ben is who he is. He always has a smile on his face. He is always up for a challenge and will always go an extra mile for anyone. And he goes on to explain um, that they were ra uh, holding the fundraiser uh, to raise charity money. He makes the point uh, further on in the report that treatments that exist are very expensive and not always effective. We are trying to make not only Ben's life easier, but also others with this rare disease. And uh, their charity is called Drop a Dollar for Rare Diseases. And uh, at that point, as I said, they were working um, to raise funds. And it was, I have to say, a very moving experience to meet a young man who, you know, in his late teens had been struck down in the way that Ben was, and yet was so profoundly determined to to wring the most out of every day uh, that um, was before him to try to get back to some sort of normal life. Later last year, um, Ben and his dad came to see me again, and uh, I, I invited my colleague, my neighbour, uh, the member for Throsby, to come along because I knew that in his shadow portfolio he'd been doing a lot of work uh, on the area of medicinal cannabis. And um, Ben and his dad came along to report to us that Ben had uh, commenced using medicinal cannabis and what a profound difference it had made in his life. On the 16th of December, um, they updated the Facebook post and this is what Ben's dad said at this point in time. Still don't know how he does it pushing more and more, a little more each time, something we can all learn from. Ben has attended his usual physical therapy yesterday and broken his own record by a huge 11 seconds, rolling around on the running track at Beaton Park in his wheelchair. If that was not enough, for the first time in over three years, Ben went out without his wheelchair. Attending his osteopath in Coromel, Ben walked in, got on the table, attended his usual treatment, then walked back to the car. This might not sound like much to most people. It is a small victory. But remember that Ben has stiff person syndrome and has been using a wheelchair for three years now for anything more than a short distance. Even when he goes out for a walk, he has the chair close by when the pain gets too uncomfortable and he has to sit down. Yes, it remains a painful activity, as most people who live with long-term pain will understand. You have to push yourself to get things done, to live as best you can. The hardest part for Ben is if he ends up in too much pain, he can spasm. And as those who have seen both on this page and personally, this is a horrible process. Ben literally takes his life in his hands by pushing these limits. <coughs> he goes on. Some might ask how. How do you do it? Medicinal cannabis oil. The change over the last few months has been nothing short of remarkable. Less pain, fewer days of intense pain, more movement, better ability to exercise, fewer prescription medications, most of which have significant side effects, and, better, and best of all, a better quality of life. But the treatment which has been Ben's lifesaver remains illegal. This mystifies me. How can something that be so beneficial not be a treatment <laughs> that can be accessed by those who need it. Can you do anything to change that? Yes, you can. And Michael uh, Ben's dad is running a petition to the New South Wales Parliament on his website. <clears throat> this is the reason I'm sure uh, many of uh, my colleagues in this place can see why uh, Ben's mum and dad and Ben himself have become such advocates for the importance of legislation such as that before us today. And it is an astonishing thing to see the difference between the young man who came to see me in May last year and the young man who did a press conference on the lawns just outside this chamber and was able to leave that press conference on his own two feet uh, with myself and the member for Throsby. So the legislation before us is something I am very pleased to support, and I want to just, in the uh, few minutes left to me, just put on the record um, the, the nature of the legislation before us. Uh, it is, of course, legislation intended to regulate the, um, the, the 
cultivation and production of medicinal cannabis. And, um, this particular bill will amend the Narcotics Drugs Act uh, to permit the licensing of growers of medicinal cannabis in Australia. It will provide new definitions for the issuing of licences for uh, cannabis cultivation and production. It will provide a fit and proper person test to be applied to licensees by the Department of Health and it will override state and territories where there are direct inconsistencies with the licensing provisions in the bill. Uh, there are of course um, there is of course I, I think almost unanimous support across certainly bipartisan support between the major parties but I think uh, unanimous support across all parties um, for the, uh, the successful passage of this bill to achieve those purposes. It is true that some may find it a bit confronting and controversial. Uh, indeed, uh, on even the Facebook and the Illawarra Mercury website, when they covered Ben's story, some people understandably still express some confusion and concern and reservation. Uh, but I think that it is well and truly time that we took uh, the steps towards making medicinal cannabis uh, a reality for people, and it does need to be appropriately regulated uh, to ensure consistency of quality, uh, dosage and so forth for people who are using it. And uh, Australia, the Australian Labor Party is very pleased to support progress on that matter. Um, we do know too that there is uh, quite a lot of evidence, not only the anecdotal direct personal experiences such as I've shared with the House today, but um, research available about the, the benefits and, and potential benefits of medicinal cannabis, but it is true that more work needs to be done on that space. Uh, we are concerned, all of us, for families who are accessing medical cannabis products um, via what is in effect a black market, uh, obviously because of direct legal uh, problems for them, the risk of arrest and conviction, um, the quality and uh, reliability issues that I've just mentioned, and the need to have uh, an independent authority that provides some assurances to them about what they're using. The bill before us is absolutely a step in the right direction. And it's worth, I think, also acknowledging that the governments of both New South Wales and Victoria are themselves pushing ahead with state-based schemes, uh, and so the Commonwealth actions will complement that. The Victorian government has committed to legalising access to locally manufactured medicinal cannabis products for use in exceptional circumstances from 2017. <coughs> the New South Wales government, who uh, Michael Oakley is petitioning, uh, and I know he's met with my state Labor colleague Ryan Park, the member for Kira, who is also fully behind their campaign. Um, the New South Wales government are vigorously pursuing medical trials of cannabis, cannabis and they've provided law enforcement by depenalising offences related to possession and use for particular classes of people. So this is an important addition to that work being done by state governments, uh, being done by families like the Oakleys, and it is important uh, that the Commonwealth does do its part in delivering these outcomes. And so I am very pleased to support the bill uh, before us. And I want to finally finish up by acknowledging uh, the, um, the great bravery that it's taken for the Oakleys to speak out. Uh, it is something that when we met with them at the end of last year, they were not certain whether they were going to do. It is a risky thing in some ways for people to speak out and talk about their own direct experiences, and I really admire them for what they've done. And I want to thank other members of this chamber on both sides who have also reported to us the experiences of constituents in their area with um, diseases such as cancer uh, who've used medicinal cannabis and pay respect to those constituents' bravery in outlining their stories for us as policy makers to make good decisions. And I can't think of anything that's more profoundly important to us than the welfare of young people like Ben Oakley and the many others who are seeking to assist with this bill. So I certainly commend the bill to the House. Yeah.